Good Tuesday morning. We have weather and traffic together. 42 degrees right now, but it feels a little bit cooler than that as we head through the morning, staying in the 40s through 9 o'clock, but 60 degrees at noon, becoming breezy. Those winds out of the southwest 10 to 20, gusting a little stronger, but middle, upper 60s, lots of sun today, Kim. All right, looking forward to that sunshine, Brandon, and you should be looking forward to your commute because it looks pretty good right now. This is the lodge right at Wyoming. We have dry roads to start off the day and light traffic volumes. No accidents to report at this time. All right, thank you, Kim. 525 is your time and doctors for Tiger Woods have given the golfer the all clear to practice without limitations. So doctors have now determined that he's able to swing a driver without pain after receiving fusion surgery on his lower back earlier this year. Now, although he's cleared to practice, there's no word yet on when he might return to tournament play. His last appearance, you might remember, it was the Dubai Desert Classic in early February of this year. He has had several surgeries, so let's hope we can make a recovery and get into competitive play again. Yeah, we do wish him well. Yeah, we do. Time now is 526 and next at 530 local stories from Taylor, also Clawson in Green Oak Township. Plus, could Amazon build its second headquarters in Detroit? We'll tell you why time is running out to make that happen. We're certainly hoping so. Also caught on camera, uh -oh. shots fired during Woo. a road rage incident in one Oakland County community. We'll have more on this for you next. This live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 5.30 starts now. Ooh, look out below. A chunk of concrete falls from a local overpass, landing right on a car below. We've heard this before. We'll tell you where it happened. That's coming up. And a different kind of dough needed for this guy headed to jail. Instead of bail money, he brought donuts. Oh. Is the local Facebook fugitive that finally turned himself in. He came bearing gifts. Also, it's another chilly start here in Metro Detroit, but change, well, they're coming. Brandon says that we could see tons of sun later. Yes. You know, like you're, you're very excited about I that. I love the sun, and I know that our day is coming where it's going to get dreary and rainy and I'm ready. All I'm, the leaves I'm are going to be off the trees. The leaves are on the ground in my house, at least. <laughs> Most of them, right? <laughs> How about snow next week? Don't no. even try it. Come on, what? Brandon. What? I didn't. What did I say? Uh, cooler air next week and a couple of systems coming through. Timing is everything, but I wouldn't doubt if we got a little wintry mix uh, at least once next week could happen anyway. That's a long time away. We've got a beautiful week for you right now. The winds are light out of the southwest, but they will be picking up 42 at Metro 34 Ann Arbor 45 Pontiac Adrian at 41 Our four zones in the 30s and 40s. Another cool one to start southwest winds 10 to 20 miles an hour gusting to 25. Uh, starting around 10 or 11 o'clock this morning, 60 degrees at noon and that southwest wind and sunshine brings us to about 67 degrees, maybe seeing a couple of 70 degree readings. And when you get the southwest wind, it usually means all of us will be warming up. We don't have the influence of the lake, although uh, some areas down in southern Ontario may not quite be that warm. Still looks good today. How about your drive this morning for live traffic and Kim DeGiulio? Drive looking good as well, Brandon. As you can see from the big picture here, we are good to go this morning. No accidents to report about this time. So we're talking about construction over on the northbound side of the lodge between Jefferson and Forest. Only one lane open there overnight, though. So this starts at 8 o'clock tonight, wrapping up tomorrow at 6 a.m. So if you do leave before 6, you're going to want to keep this one in mind. Also, the southbound lanes of the lodge, the ramp to Grand River. That's going to be closed overnight as well. This happening 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. And that's not all we have for construction. We also want to talk about I-275, but I'll tell you the details on that coming up at 544. Back to you. All righty, Kim, we'll check back in with you. It is 532, everybody. Our top story this half hour, the Facebook fugitive finally makes good on his promise to surrender. You might remember us telling you about this story. Uh, yes, with the very funny name. Uh, he turned himself in last night in Redford Township, and as Coco McAvoy reports today, he heads to court. Michael Zadell is due in court today after turning himself in to the police department yesterday evening. Michael Zadell, known on Facebook as Champagne Torino, turned himself into police after an unconventional Facebook challenge. Officers from the Redford Township Police Department say Zadell bombarded them with taunts for quite some time. The last few weeks, Mr. Torino has had a few comments for us, uh, most of which have not been very 
polite. I think uh, the way some people term it is uh, he's been trolling our page. Yeah. Zidell was wanted for several misdemeanors, and when the Redford Township Police Department posted about him being a wanted man, he commented, saying if their Facebook posts reached a thousand shares, he'd show up with donuts. I don't think that's what he expected us to do, was share his message, and when we just screenshot his message and put it on there. Last night, he kept his promise and showed up to the police department to turn himself in with the donuts. While the officers had fun with this one, they say it's a serious matter and he will be held accountable for his crimes. The Ripper Township Police Department posted on their Facebook page yesterday thanking the community for their support. In Redford Township, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. Thank you, Coco. Now to Taylor, where a Burlington Coat Factory is reopened this morning after a deadly dispute between co-workers. This happened Monday inside the store on Eureka Road. Police say an argument between two female employees escalated until one woman fatally shot the other. Caught on camera, shots fired during a road rage incident in Clawson. Surveillance video shows the two drivers pull into this parking lot here. You see one jumps out, but then the other one, take a look here, tries to run him over. Then that driver gets out of his car, pulls out a weapon and fires a shot at the other man. This morning, police are still searching for the armed driver. And a terrifying moment as a chunk of concrete breaks off and falls from an overpass, landing right on a car. This happened this time on Whitmore Lake Road at US 23 in Green Oak Township on Monday. Fortunately, the woman driving the car was not seriously hurt. President Donald Trump is pushing for a new united front with lawmakers, but this morning his comments about past presidents are causing new controversy. NBC's Edward Lawrence is in Washington to explain. Good morning. Well, good morning, Rhonda. Right now there are less than 40 days left on the calendar for Congress. Lawmakers will be very busy. President Donald Trump and Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell emerged at the Rose Garden putting past insults and tension behind them. We're probably now, I think, at least as far as I'm concerned, closer than ever before. And uh, the relationship is very good. We are together totally on this agenda to move America forward. The newfound love for one another will have an uphill battle, getting the president's agenda passed with a divided Republican Party. The polarization has never been greater. Among the issues Congress will face, passing a long-term budget, tax reform, health care, immigration, and the Iran nuclear deal. Don't forget, uh, it took years for the Reagan administration to get taxes done. I've been here for nine months. I can say the same thing for health care. The president ducked the blame for failures to pass reforms up to now, while sparking sharp criticism, saying President Obama and other presidents never called families of fallen soldiers. They'd write letters, and some presidents didn't do anything. So I was with President Obama on a number of occasions in which he paid his respects to fallen soldiers. He got caught flat-footed, and so the, the default position was, well, Obama, well, you know, he never did this. The president speaks at the Heritage Foundation today. We will see if he wants to clarify any of his comments. In fact, a former deputy chief of staff for President Obama went further, calling the president's accusations an outright lie. In Washington, Edward Lawrence, Local 4. Right now, Detroit police need your help. They need your help in finding a missing 15-year-old girl. Skylar Magnum is pictured here on your screen. She was last seen on Saturday walking on Strathcona Drive near Woodward and West Seven Mile. She's described as five foot four, weighs around 150 pounds. There's her photo on your screen. She has braids and a top knot. If you have seen her or know where she could be, you're asked to call Detroit police. It is 537, everybody, and the clock is ticking. Thursday marks a very important day for the city of Detroit. Yes, it does. That is the final deadline to make a pitch for Amazon's coveted new headquarters. We want it here and we're pulling out all the stops. Dan Gilbert and company have been leading the charge in recruiting the internet giant with this hype up video and many other efforts. The city that gets the honors could see up to 50,000 new jobs. It is a game changer for sure. And they are working up to the very last deadline too. Yeah, absolutely. I was getting my haircut yesterday and there was camera crews in there filming oh, yes. for this Amazon video. <laughs> They've been around to a lot of local businesses here in the yeah. city to show what a wonderful place it is to live and work and play and so hopefully we get lucky. We earned it. Yes. Yes, it's not luck. Time now is 537 and seems like this happens every year. A Halloween costume that gets removed from a website because it has some controversy surrounding it.
We'll tell you about that coming up. Plus, a longtime shopping spot in St. Clair Shores is closing down for good. That's coming up next. We've extended. Well, welcome back, everybody. A big change coming to St. Clair Shores. The city's Kmart is going to be closing its doors. The Kmart will be demolished and a Kroger is going to be built in its place. The store's removal could cost up to 127 employees their jobs if Kroger chooses not to hire from the Kmart's former staff. The store will close for demolition in just a few months in early January. All right, let's get to some stories that you might have missed now. A Georgia woman says that she was humiliated after a Delta flight attendant told her not to sing the national anthem. Her name is Dr. Pamela Godry, and she was flying back to Georgia when she learned that fallen staff sergeant Dustin Wright was on her flight, and she felt compelled to honor him in song. So Dr. Godry and others wanted to sing the national anthem while soldiers unloaded the body, but a flight attendant said it was against company policy. She told me that several of the people on the plane were from other countries and that they were uncomfortable with us singing the national anthem. Hmm. Pretty shocking. Dr. Godry says that Delta has since apologized for what happened. She says the airline told her that there is no policy about singing the anthem and that the flight attendant was wrong. I was thinking, like, how could there be a policy about how they actually created a policy for that? I'm also trying to figure <laughs> out who was going to stop her from bursting out into song. <laughs> Very you true. know what I mean? Like, are they going to put their hands over her mouth or, or what? And especially for the reason that they chose to yeah. do that. So. Uh, speaking of singing, season 13 of The Voice continues only here on Local 4. And Monday's episode featured a Michigan native who threw down. Yes, he did. 26 year old Lucas Holiday. He is from Lansing, Michigan, mm -hmm. and he squared off in the show's battle rounds against Chicago native Megan McNeil. The pair performed Bobby Brown's 1988 song, My Prerogative, and they killed it. Just Wait, and so you mean to tell me the mic. You mean to tell me that that was not Britney Spears' original song? <laughs> oh, come on. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Um, I didn't he expect is that from voice Lansing, out of him. Michigan. They plucked him out of a grocery store. He used wow. to sing while he was in a grocery store. He became a YouTube sensation, and he's doing very well on Team Jennifer Hudson. And what's his name again? Frazier? His name is Lucas. Lucas. But he, but he does look a bit it. like Frazier, yes. but that voice is powerful and really good. Yeah. So he, he made it through to the next round, Brandon. And the other lady with the Afro puff, she did really good. Yeah, she had a great voice, too. It was tough that they battled them against each other, you know? Oh, yeah. Um, I love that song, though, and I love their version of it, the way they hit those notes at the end. That was very unique. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. We are seeing the light winds right now that we'll be picking up later, just sort of advertising that as our theme of the day. 42 degrees outside your door right now, and temperatures, whether it's golf day, maybe get out in the yard and do a little work day, or maybe you're just heading to work today. 44 degrees at 8 a.m., 60 degrees at noon, 67. Pretty decent when you consider yesterday, 58 was our high, and we'll be at that number right around 8 p.m. The sun sets tonight at 6 48 p.m. A ton of sunshine, just a little bit of wind. We have the area of low pressure to our north, high pressure to our south. Low pressure means air is rising, storm maker. High pressure means air is moving down toward the earth and it's a stable weather maker. But when we have the two of them placed as they are, they squeeze the winds in between 10 to 20 miles an hour, gusting to 25 throughout the afternoon hours. And you'll feel the winds by 10 or 11 this morning. A uh, quick little recap of the rainfall since Thursday. This is uh, showing us that we have had some areas getting two, three, four inches of rain and we needed it. I'll tell you it was a dry September in everybody's bucket with the exception I guess of Ann Arbor, but we had uh, already this month. Uh, what are we 17 days in? We've had 11 days of some level of rain, either a trace light or heavy rain uh, and almost two inches at Metro. But look at Pontiac over four inches, over three inches in October in Lapeer. A lot of this came over the weekend. 
but it was much needed for our lakes, for our reservoirs, our rivers and streams, everything benefits from this great fall rain. And now the fall foliage will really take off with that fresh rain, these cool overnights and tons of sunshine. The recipe there for some good stuff. So maybe this weekend you're heading up north doing a little uh, fall foliage tour. It should be gorgeous. 67 a day. Wouldn't be surprised if we get a couple of 70s out there with these winds out of the southwest and all the sun. Near 70 Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It's a broken record, Kim DeGiulio. But Saturday, Sparty looking good in East Lansing. Sunday night, our next rain chance. All right, well, we will watch out for that, but today looks pretty good out there. Let's take a look at the big picture. No accidents to report at this time, but of course, we've got construction to talk about over on Grand River, north and southbound sides of Grand River, right at Burt here. There's going to be one lane block between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. Also, 275 will have some construction, both sides from Ecourse Road to Ann Arbor Road. Expect one lane block there, also happening between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m., but this will be happening today, tomorrow, and Thursday as well. Now, Everett, uh, you have to pay attention to this one. He always asks me about this one. Southbound I-75, the ramp to the southbound side of the lodge. One lane block there overnight, 9 p.m. to 6 a.m. So that could slow you down a little bit if you do travel during the overnight hours. But usually then traffic volumes are lighter. And we want to take a look at your I-94 commute. We'll look at that coming up in my next report at 554. Back to you. How nice of you, a personalized little update there for Evrod. So we know Tasty Tuesday is still about an hour away, but later on tonight there is a really cool event. It's a, a food event uh, combining with cars that's going on in Detroit. It's called Lexus Uncorked, and it's going to be held from 7 until 10 tonight at the Garden Theater right there in Midtown along Woodward Avenue. The event features chefs and food from four different Metro Detroit eateries, Savannah Blue, La Crepe, Smokey G's Smokehouse, and Lone Star Catering. The event is completely free, but you must RSVP at the Garden Theater's website. This is the first time that the Lexus Uncourt event will make its stop in Detroit, and I hear it's quite fabulous. We are going to be sending 10 of our viewers for the VIP experience, so if you want to partake tonight, just head on over to the Local 4 Facebook page. Everod, you have some special guests. Yeah, I've got some fun guests in studio with me this morning. 30 black male leaders here in Metro Detroit are being called the Made Man. It's a title and honor given to these men who, in turn, are going to be spending the day giving back by inspiring educating and helping to dress other men in our community and joining me this morning a good friend Rodney Howell. He's the owner of Harrison Salon in Southfield. We also have Sean Blanchard. He's a an author a motivational speaker and we also have Kai Daly. She is the founder of the made man joining us to tell us about this fun fun event that you guys have planned. Kai I know that you're under the weather today so we're not going to make you talk very much but I just kind of explain what the made man is for our viewers at home. Well, the Made Man is quite simple. It's a, it's a bridge to honor aspirational men, inspirational men, and build a gap between giving back for mm -hmm. these men. First of all, they, they've done exceptional work in the community, and these men want to make sure future Made Men get to come up and do exactly what they do. So the day is full of um, us taking our honorees into the schools to speak to young men at Cass Technical High School. Mm -hmm. And we also do a press conference to brand the narrative of African-American male leaders. And we also collect suits during the reception to make sure we empower underserved men. So it's to inspire, empower, and highlight what our African-American male leaders are doing. Absolutely, and you guys have done this tour in yes. many other cities all over the country. And now we're here in Detroit where these are two of our honorees. How did it feel, Sean? How did it feel when you found out that you were selected for this? Well, you know, it was an honor. Um, <laughs> once I found out that, first off, the symbol for it itself, the icon, mm -hmm. I said, oh, okay, this looks official. <laughs> it does, right? And then when I saw the sponsors that were behind it too, I mean, you know, you, know, you have 100 black men, of course you have Black Enterprise, uh, banks of company and you see all these different people that are a part of it and then I looked at the honorees and I said wow if these good brothers are on here <laughs> <laughs> oh, this makes me feel great absolutely Rodney Howell another honoree we also have our very own Andrew Humphrey who's going to be honored tonight as well as Judge Craig Strong John Mason from Mason and Coco in the morning Coleman Young II uh, for you Rodney uh, we, I've, we've known Rodney for a long time <laughs> as well as Sean how does what does it mean to be a made man? Um, a made man to me is a man that takes his God-given gifts mm -hmm. to be a blessing to someone else, uh, a brother that walks in his own truth, yes. that knows who he is and what he's not. 
and don't allow someone to, you know, say what he is right. or to take his worth and put a number on it. And you so guys are going to be talking exactly. to these students exactly. at Cast Tech exactly. today. This is an event that's open to the public, but the students at Cast Tech, what do you want them to know? Because I know, Sean, you speak to, to people all over the country. Right. He's always right. on a plane. Every time Sean's I text him, man. what are you doing this weekend? He's like, oh, I'm in Atlanta. Oh, I'm in D.C. So you're going to be speaking to the students at Cast Tech today. What do you want them to know about being a made man? Well, you know what? I really like people to know whatever they can be. I like to know that there is no barrier of what you can become. And when they just see all these different men that are mm -hmm. quote unquote made men, mm -hmm. they understand that there is a gap for them. There's a space for them because mm -hmm. there's going to be 30 individuals that do 30 different things right. mm -hmm. where these young men can fit in somewhere. Fantastic. And I like the fact that they're also going to be helping to dress some of these men. Look at how sharp mm -hmm. they're dressed this morning. Yes. We've got Thank all you. the information Thank about you. the Made Man Thank event you. that's going to be happening today at different locations here in Detroit. Just go to the community page of clickondetroit.com. And also culminating with a very fun reception where you guys are going to be honored. Uh, there's ticket information as well on clickondetroit.com. So thank you guys so much for joining us this morning. Thank we you hope so you feel much. better. Oh, thank you for thank coming you. in the studio so with us early. today. <laughs> it is early. Rondo will send it over to you. <laughs> That's the same thing we say every morning when the alarm goes off at two. But good congratulations to Sean and also Rodney. Great role models in our community for young people and definitely deserving of this honor. So congratulations to you both. After the break, we're going to show you the Halloween costume that is causing so much controversy that is no longer being sold. See what it is and why. We'll be right back. Tonight at 10. Well, good Tuesday morning. Welcome back to Local 4 News today. Another cool one. Upper 30s and low 40s out your door, but 60 by noon and 67 the afternoon high under sunny skies. A little gusty out there with the winds out of the southwest, but a good birthday today. Kim. <laughs> yes, it's my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mom. All right, well, here's a look at well, she's not going to leave today because she's staying at home, but 94 right near I-96 looks good. Uh, you can see that we have dry roads to start off the day and no accidents to report at this time. All right. Thank you, Kim. 556 is your time and NFL owners will have their annual meeting in New York today. A major topic of today's summit will be the national anthem protests. Owners are hoping to reach a middle ground to satisfy the league, the players and the fans. This is all while Colin Kaepernick has an active grievance filed alleging collusion among NFL owners after his initial national anthem protests against him playing in the NFL. The NFL Players Union, who are supporting Kaepernick's grievance, will also be a attending the meeting. So a Minnesota company has pulled a controversial Halloween costume from its website after a large amount of criticism on social media. Yeah, so here's the costume and it's called Anne Frank costume for girls. It includes a green beret, a blue dress, brown bag and an ID tag. Many call the costume offensive and say that it trivializes the suffering of Anne Frank, who spent two years hiding from German soldiers during World War II as a child. It is 5.57 on your Tuesday morning. What, wow. what day did you think it might be? I, Just wondering honestly, what was going through your head. Honestly, I did think that it was Friday. You already? Yeah, I did. <laughs> like yesterday wasn't Monday. Right. <laughs> Coming up, we have all new stories for you from local, uh, from Dearborn, uh, as well as other areas in Metro yeah, Detroit. Wishful thinking. I know. <laughs> also ahead, Disney is going to the dogs, what the theme park is doing for the first time for family pets. And an old drug is offering new hope for people who struggle with depression, but it comes with a little bit of controversy. We'll explain everything when we come back on this Tuesday morning <laughs> in just a minute. We're back in a moment. It's live from downtown Detroit. Local 4 News Today at 6 starts now. Custody controversy. Today a hearing on a judge's ruling allowing a convicted sex offender joint custody of a child with a woman he raped. Plus new details on the hazing investigation at Dearborn Fortson High School as the district superintendent looks to calm community concern. Plus, rolling out the fleet, new this morning, where General Motors is set to test its self-driving cars out on the roads. Thanks for joining us, everybody, on this Tuesday, a.k.a. Tasty Tuesday morning here on Local 4. Why did I think that you were going to say a.k.a. Friday Eve, oh, no, Eve, no, Eve. don't start this. <laughs> it's, this, is, this is getting way out of hand. We'll just stick with the Friday Eve Eve. It's Tasty Tuesday. It already has the name. That's true. Right, Brandon? <laughs> What? He's trying to take everything away. <laughs> this Eve's, Eve's uh, hump day is no longer, it's Eve's Eve. I, I love 
Friday Eve. We're working on the rest of you though with Friday Eve Eve. Good Tuesday, tasty Tuesday morning. Mount Clemens live shot there looks good. 43 degrees, a little southwest wind at 8 for the kids at the bus stop this morning. Low 40s, a little bit of a breeze, so it's sweatshirt, light jacket weather. But shorts maybe today again, 67 degrees through the afternoon. Yesterday we didn't make it out of the 50s, uh, but the breezes will be picking up here and there through the 10, 11 o'clock hours this morning into the afternoon. We have temps in the 30s and 40s out there. A cool start for sure, but again, a much better day than yesterday and yesterday wasn't too bad. Sky conditions were great. We're just going to heat it up a little bit today, Kim, as we keep the roads dry. For once, yes. it feels like. You said there was 11 days so far in the 17 days of October that we've had rain. That's a lot of rain, but we're not dealing with it right now. Look at, we are accident free to start off the morning. Here is a look at your commute over on I-696, right at I-75. Traffic volumes are starting to build a little bit, but we are so thankful that we've got dry roads to start off the day and no accidents or backups that are gonna slow you down as you head out the door. However, you may see a little bit of a slowdown if you travel over on I-94. We've got construction to talk about. I'll tell you all about it coming up in my next report at 614. Back to you. All right, Kim, thank you. We are following breaking news from Detroit's west side. That is where a police situation is unfolding. Now, the area in question is Plymouth and Littlefield. You see the roadway is blocked off there. Officers on the scene, though, are not telling us what is going on, but Plymouth is closed for the investigation. We are there monitoring the situation and we'll continue to keep you updated as more information becomes available. It is 6.02 now, and the decision sparked nationwide outrage. A judge in Sanilac County granting a joint custody of a, of a child to a convicted sex offender. Yes, but the judge didn't know the child was conceived during a sexual assault he was convicted for. Coco McAvoy joins us with what's happening today on this controversial ruling. Good morning. Officials from Sanilac County say this case never should have made it this far. They admit the case slipped through the cracks, and they also say that Christopher Mirasolo never should have been granted legal custody. It's a case that garnered a lot of attention and devastated a young mother facing the possibility of sharing custody of her child with a man who sexually assaulted her. I hope that he never has any kind of rights to him at all. The mother says she was raped by Christopher Mirasolo when she was just 12 years old. She's now 21 and has an eight year old son. He was conceived in rape, but I don't look at it like that. He's my child. He's part of me. He's not part of him. Mirasolo was granted legal custody by a Sanilac judge after the mother sought financial assistance from the state. The woman's attorney says a Sanilac County assistant prosecutor, Eric Scott, filed a motion to establish paternity and collect child support. And he claimed that my client agreed to it. And he even claimed that she signed the judgment. And I told him, no, she didn't. I have it right here. The young mother never thought she would end up in this situation. Everyone told me it would never happen. It would never go through. But here we are, and it's happening now. Now, officials from Sanilac County say this case never should have made it this far and say they support the appropriate resolution on this case. Hopefully, other rape victims who have experienced the same thing will hear word of this, and, and also judges will learn that uh, they can't be doing this sort of thing, that they're going to be held accountable. The motion hearing will be held today at 1.30. We'll, of course, let you know what happens. I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. All right, Coco, thank you. It is 6.04 now. And the Dearborn School District is trying to keep parents calm while rumors while rumors continue to fly about a hazing incident at Fortson High School. Students there say the incident involved three members of the JV football team assaulting a freshman player in the locker room. Now, the superintendent spoke about the incident last night, saying that he's trying to be as transparent as possible, but his hands are tied. Some Fortson students, however, not satisfied. I'm glad that he addressed it, and I'm glad that something's happening with it. However, I would have liked to have known more about what the steps they're going to be taking to prevent something like this happening in the future. Now this morning, we're working to get a copy of the police report for this incident. Of course, you'll want to keep it here on Local 4 and on CloakandDetroit.com for the very latest as the police investigation continues.
New information in the investigation of an alleged violent arrest by an off-duty police officer working as a security guard. Officer Lonnie Wade, seen in this video, has been placed on administrative leave for the Detroit Police Department. Wade was, had also been barred from talking, uh, taking on secondary employment like moonlighting as a Meyer security guard. This news comes as Bivens, Michael Bivens, files a $25 million lawsuit against Meyer and Wade. And a Detroit man arrested for attempted sexual assault has been arraigned. Cortez Bender is accused of following a 29-year-old woman from Greektown Casino into the parking garage and attempted to sexually assault her. Bender received a $250,000 cash bond and will be back in court on October 25th. Well, the number of dead of the dead has increased to 41 now. At least 41 people are, have died in the fires. Thousands have been forced to evacuate as wildfires continue to burn in Northern California. Firefighters there are making some progress against the flames, but a number of people are still unaccounted for, and the National Guard has deployed troops to aid in search and rescue efforts. More than 100,000 Californians are still not able to return to their homes. And in Louisiana, seven people are hurt, and one is still missing after Sunday night's explosion on Lake Pontchartrain oil rig. The exact cause of the blast is still unknown. Four of the seven that have been injured have since been released from the hospital. A stern warning from North Korea. The country's deputy United Nations ambassador spoke to the General Assembly. Kim Ing Rong said that the current situation on the Korean Peninsula has, quote, reached a touch and go point and nuclear war may break out at any moment. Also saying that the North should pose nuclear weapons in self-defense. It is 6.07 now, and Netflix users, well, they can expect a lot more original content, a little original movies and TV shows from the streaming service. We'll and explain. Jason is here with a very special guest. Good morning. Good morning. You've seen his work on the football field, and now you'll see it on store shelves. Detroit Lions safety Don Carey joins me to talk about his new read after this. Ooh, welcome back, everybody. We have jobs for you this morning. The holidays are quickly approaching, and JCPenney is getting ready for the biggest shopping season of the year by holding a hiring fair at all of its locations. It will be from 2 p.m. until 8 p.m. today. They're offering flexible hours and up to a 25% store discount. You can also apply online. We're back in a minute. He delivers big hits on game day, and now Detroit Lion Don Carey is looking to deliver some inspiration with his new book uh, entitled, It's Not Because I'm Better Than You. I love the title, Don. Good to see you. Thanks for having me. Explain to all the folks watching right now what you mean by, It's Not Because I'm Better Than You. Sure. So the, the title of the, of the book comes from a question I'm constantly asked, you know, how do I get to where I am? And I, I'm, I make an emphasis to tell people it's not because I'm better than you. And by that, I mean there are other factors involved uh, to getting to the NFL. Uh, I'm looking at page uh, 32 here. Uh, the opportunity of a lifetime only exists within the lifetime of that opportunity. Right, right, right. It's, it's one of my favorite quotes, but it, it's so true. You, you never know when you're going to have that opportunity um, to, to make an impact. So you always have to be ready. Always have to be. What was your inspiration for writing the book? So my, my wife and I, we travel the country speaking to young adults, um, high school kids, and I'm often asked again, right, how do I get to where I am? And I wanted to kind of lay out a, a blueprint of how I got to the NFL, and I don't think I'm anyone special. So hopefully my history, the things I've been through, can inspire someone else. You've got some uh, players singled out here, like Glover Quinn, uh, Dominic Raiola, uh, Jason Hansen. What can you say about character guys like that? It is individuals like these uh, who've helped make me the player, the man I am today. And um, I, I'm excited that they agreed to, to impart some words into someone as well. Because I know oftentimes we, we see these guys on a, on a football field, but you, you don't really get a chance to, to see the man behind the mask, so to speak, the character that they have. So um, I'm excited for people to read about them too. Yeah, I mean, you're dropping Thomas Edison quotes in here. Opportunity is missed by most people because it's dressed in overalls and looks like work. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's easy to think that individuals, you know, are able to make plays or get to a certain level simply because they're in the right place at the right time. But oftentimes, um, success comes to those who work for it. When you get to game day, how do you get 
fired up to play such a demanding physical sport, you know, where the risk of injury is very real, uh, and apply the principles that you have in the book? Well, for, for me, Sundays are easy. Like I always say I get paid from Monday through Saturday. I do Sunday for free. Uh, my, my love for the game, my passion for the game since I was five years old, it, it kind of helps, you know, get you up, get you fired uh, for that game on Sunday. You can't really think about the injuries. You know, playing uh, to avoid injuries is the best way to get injured. I love what you just said about playing Sunday is easy because Monday through Saturday you work so hard to prepare for it. If you'd like a copy of the book, head to the Local 4 Facebook page. We are giving away not one, not two, but three. <laughs> Count them, three copies. All you have to do is go to the Local 4 Facebook page. Don, right. thanks for the inspiration. Thank you, sir. All right, back to you guys. Very inspirational. Absolutely, and I actually learned about Don Carey from Brandon Rue because you met him before and heard him speak. Well, I've done two events with Don, and I mean, you are, this is just like the tip of the iceberg of how powerful he is, a, a speaker and a, a spiritual leader in our community. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, and those books are always good. You need a little uplifting yes. motivation, so I'm going to read it, Don. My, my son is reading uh, his copy right now, uh, signed, autographed to him. Oh, that's cool. I mean, sometimes it's... You know, Did you hook that up? Good to have friends in <laughs> high places. A dad in you know? high places. <laughs> yes, uh, absolutely did. But uh, let's go ahead and celebrate a different day today. It is. It's my mom's birthday. Aww. She's up now. She's watching. All right. Mom, happy birthday. She's 35 today. 35. Wow. <laughs> Kim is 12. <laughs> what? What? How does this? How, we got to do the math here. Wait a minute. But uh, I don't know if we're going to show another picture of your mom, but we did earlier, and she is beautiful. I don't know how the apple fell so far from, I'm kidding. Kim is beautiful as well. You guys even look alike. Uh, here's a look at uh, what we have right now, your four zone temperatures in the 40s. And as the south southwest winds start to increase, I don't think we're going to fall off any more here, but we are still about an hour and a half away from your sunrise. 43 degrees at uh, Metro Airport, 46 in Lapeer, 45 degrees uh, right now in Oakland County. Bus stop temperatures, 40 to 45 degrees and with that little bit of a breeze it feels a little bit cooler so a light jacket or a sweatshirt and shorts why well look at these numbers taking off thanks to the wind and the sunshine we should see a ton of sun 10 to 20 mile an hour winds out of the southwest gusting to 25 a little bit of a nuisance with the Autumn leaves blowing all over the neighborhood, but that's about it. Not a big problem from the wind. 67 degrees and mostly sunny most of your afternoon. The winds are squeezing in between high pressure and low pressure, what is called a pressure gradient. And coming out of the southwest, we'll take it really don't have a whole lot to talk about other than the breeze today and Kim's mom's birthday. But we focus on the weather. Tomorrow it is similar, a little bit warmer, a little less breezy, but still a little breezy, but nice near 70 degrees Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, broken record Saturday. Go green. Looks good in East Lansing. Sunday, we're going to see increasing clouds and rain and thunder chances as we hit the evening hours on Sunday. Our 1-800 Hansen's weather window from Belle Isle, a beautiful shot here. You can kind of see the foliage there or the shrubs in the foreground and your beautiful city in the background. Detroit, Josh Strand, our photojournalist this morning. Thank you, Josh. And 1 800 Hansons, a good look out your window. Kim is here with her traffic report. Well, we have had a great morning for traffic. The roads are dry this morning and no accidents so far, so let's keep it that way. We just kind of talk about some construction over on westbound I-94, right between I-75 and the lodge. Expect one lane block between the hours of 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. And then eastbound I-94 will have some construction as well. Right near Zeeb Road, only one lane open from 9 to 3. This project also happening tomorrow during that same time. So keep that in mind for those of you who travel over on I-94. Rhonda. All right, Kim, thank you. In today's consumer headlines, Disney is going to the dogs. We'll explain. Plus, Netflix is looking to add a lot more original content. But first, General Motors is bringing its self-driving fleet to the Big Apple. Let's get to Mirabel Avery joining us now live from NASDAQ with more. Good morning.
Hey, good morning, Rhonda. General Motors indeed set to become that first company to test self-driving cars right here in New York City. A fleet of Chevy Bolts will cruise around a five square mile area of a lower Manhattan and test early next year. GM will have an operator in each car, though, to gather data and take over if needed. The cars are expected to face challenges such as bad weather and New York drivers, <laughs> which will help GM improve uh, its software. Netflix plans to spend as much as $8 billion on video programming next year. That's up from $6 billion uh, that it's Spending this year on content, Netflix is battling Apple, Amazon, and Facebook as it hunts for original shows and movies. The streaming service also said it added 5.3 million new subscribers last quarter. Uh, that was well above Wall Street analyst estimates. Disney is welcoming dogs at four Disney World Resort hotels. The four locations are Disney's Art of Animation, the Port Orleans uh, Riverside, the Yacht Club, and the Cabins at Fort Wilderness Resort. Guests can bring a maximum of two dogs, but they need to be well trained. We and properly vaccinated. Only certain floors or sections of the hotels will be dog friendly. Because Rhonda, really, isn't the dog part of your family? I know you know this guy. Aww. He shows up on your Christmas card all the time. <laughs> so cute. Absolutely, it's a part of the family, and it's tough for some families to leave them behind. So definitely a nice perk for those that have dogs. Exactly. Absolutely. Thank you, Maribel. It is 619 on your Tuesday and police accepted his challenge and last night a Facebook fugitive made good on his promise ahead. We'll tell you what he's expected to do today. But first hailed a miracle drug, the controversial therapy for depression that is gaining traction. But before we go to break, let's meet today's Facebook friend for the day. This is Carly Rodak from St. Clair Shores. She is currently a home care worker and loves her Rottweiler Dante. That's a cool name for a dog uh, who goes to work with her to bring joy to the patients. Well, we want to mail you a gift card from Happy's Pizza to bring joy to you and for being our friend of the day, Carly. So congratulations to you and an invitation to all of our other friends out there. Make sure that you like the Local Ford Facebook page. And if you have already, make sure you go back and click on that front of the day tab so that you may be our next friend of the day. We're back in a moment. All right, welcome back everybody. It is 623 and it's time for good health. The highly controversial drug that some believe is a miracle treatment for depression, ketamine. Ketamine is most commonly known as the street drug Special K, but has been used by some doctors as an anesthetic since the early 1970s. Well, right now treating depression with ketamine is experimental, but doctors are hopeful for FDA approval. Ketamine's probably the most exciting breakthrough in the treatment of major depressive disorder that, that we've had in perhaps 50 years. Now, of course, ketamine is still a dangerous drug and should only be used under strict doctor's supervision. Brandon, over to you. All right, Everett, thanks very much. 43 degrees outside your door. It's another cool start, but clear skies, sunshine, and a little bit of a warmer breeze help us warm up. We should be near 60 at lunchtime, 67 year high, with those southwest winds 10 to 20, gusting even stronger again. Yeah, blowing the leaves around a little bit, Kim, later in the day, but no big problems. All right, looking forward to that sunshine. Now here's a look at two accidents we have. This one over on Warren, the northbound lanes just past I-696, one lane blocked there, and then over on M53, the southbound lanes right at M59, one lane blocked because of an accident there. Be careful. Quick check of your sports this morning, and the Red Wings played host to the Tampa Bay Lightning in their second home game of the regular season. The Wings found themselves down after one, but fought back to tie it up at two. In the end, this little dribbler, look how slow this thing is going. You'd think Jimmy Howard could reach back and, I mean, it's like slow motion. Oh, that was slow motion. That was the game winner. The Wings fall three to two. The Lightning win it. They'll be, uh, Wings will be in Toronto tomorrow night. Game three of the American League Championship Series between the Yankees and the Astros in New York last night. And the Yankees were powered by two three-run home runs en route to an eight-to-one win. There's Aaron Judge just powering it over the left field wall. That series is uh, Astros or Verlanders two, Yankees one. Game four at four this afternoon. All right, Brandon, thank you to 625, everybody. Coming up next at 630, local stories for you from Redford, Taylor, and Clawson. And drivers suffering some damage to their cars after bad gas contaminates <laughs> their car. Say that again, won't Not you? Not funny. <laughs> <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Contaminated gas.
It's bad. It just made it worse. <laughs> but first, Bill Murray helps a couple make a very special announcement. That's next. It's today's top video after we fix the gas problem. I can tell you're about to laugh. Too. Hey, I got news for you. You're going to be grandparents. You're having a baby. <laughs> Well, isn't that oh, wow. cool? Oh, that's cool. This is today's top video, everybody. Comedian Bill Murray helps a Chicago couple, if you couldn't tell by the Cubs gear, uh, deliver some exciting baby news to their parents. Yeah, this message was definitely not lost in translation. The dad-to-be posted the news on his Instagram page, and it's already gotten thousands of views. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool for Bill Murray to play along with Right? That. All right, we're back in a minute, everybody. <laughs> Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News Today at 6.30 starts now. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tuesday. Thank you for waking up with us on this Tasty Tuesday. Yeah, we are just minutes away, actually, from Tasty Tuesday. We're looking forward to that. In the meantime, we got a lot of news to get to as today the search continues for a gunman who opened fire after a road rage incident in Clawson. You might remember this video. The shocking confrontation was all caught on camera. Plus, he taunted police on Facebook, and now he's behind bars, set to be brought before a judge. And 31 marathons in just 31 days. This morning, this Marine veteran is bringing his cause to Detroit. But first, let's send it over to Brandon. I feel like <laughs> I saw him, like, get all upset. He didn't get to tell us straight this morning. Well, yet. Right now, we're looking at numbers across the country, 40s in Denver, but near 60 in Houston. As you come back up to Detroit, 43, look at Miami at 77 degrees right now. Chilly out on the East Coast. Our forecast is all about two W's today. Two W's? You'll see. Wait for it. <laughs> I thought you were just going to say winning or yeah, wonderful. I thought this was like fly the W or something. I actually thought we were going back to the desk. So. <laughs> here I am just kind yeah, of waiting, bring it. waiting for it, waiting for it. We want more. All right. Well, here you go. I've got you covered. We have uh, temperature outside again right now around 43 degrees. Loading my maps up here. Uh, looking pretty good uh, as we head out and about. Don't tell me, I'm, I have to do four zone now? I'm protesting in silence. Are you gonna give us any more? People are not wanting to agree with me this morning. Uh, the weather computer gremlins are out there. Uh, what are we doing here, guys? Weather degrees out there right now. Yeah. <laughs> The high today will be in the 60s. And very nice, pleasant day. Yes, out of the last uh, well, 17th day of October, guess how many days it has rained? We've had precipitation. Four. No. Have you been listening this morning? No. Oh, I missed that too. <laughs> oh, he Thanks, said it like Ted? four times. Close. 11 days Whew, okay. we've had rain in the forecast. That which to make up for the drought in September. Exactly. Yeah. And that just, you know, rain equals no fun on the roads. So thankfully, that's not what we're dealing with this morning. Uh, so let's take a look at what's going on here in the maps. Uh, we have one problem I want to let you know about. Let's zoom into that problem right now. This is in Warren, actually, the northbound side of Mound, just past I-696 here. One lane blocked because of an accident. So if you do travel that way, watch out for that. Also, let's take a look right now with our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is an earlier accident we had over on M53, right at M59. Good news is that accident has just cleared, so those backups are starting to clear. Should be good to go in just a couple of minutes minutes, but that's a look at your traffic right now. We'll send it over to you. Alrighty, Kim, thank you. We'll also get an updated forecast from Brandon coming up in about 10 minutes. Right now we want to get to breaking news that we're following from Detroit's west side. That is where there is some sort of police situation that's happening here on Plymouth and Littlefield. We know that officers are there on the scene. Not telling us a lot about what's going on, but we do want to give you a live look. You can see there's caution tape up there on the street and a number of police cars that have that road blocked off. The street is closed as the investigation there continues as to what they're investigating. We're still working to find that out, but we'll update you as soon as more information becomes available. It is 632 everybody.
And today, a man who eluded police, even taunting them on Facebook, will be in court. And this is all after he made good on that promise on social media to turn himself in. And he brought something for those officers, as promised as well. Yeah, Coco McAvoy is in Redford, where the man who calls himself Champagne Torino is still in jail. Michael Zadell is due in court today after turning himself in to the police department yesterday evening. Michael Zadell, known on Facebook as Champagne Torino, turned himself into police after an unconventional Facebook challenge. Officers from the Redford Township Police Department say Zadell bombarded them with taunts for quite some time. The last few weeks, Mr. Torino has had a few comments for us, uh, most of which have not been very polite. I think uh, the way some people term it is uh, he's been trolling our page. Yeah. Zadell was wanted for several misdemeanors, and when the Redford Township Police Department posted about him being a wanted man, he commented, saying if their Facebook posts reached a thousand shares, he'd show up with donuts. I don't think that's what he expected us to do, was share his message, and when we just screenshot his message and put it on there. Last night, he kept his promise and showed up to the police department to turn himself in with the donuts. While the officers had fun with this one, they say it's a serious matter and he will be held accountable for his crimes. The Redford Township Police Department posted on their Facebook page yesterday thanking the community for their support. In Redford Township, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4 News Today. All right, Coco, thank you. Now turning to some stories that are making headlines all across Metro Detroit for you this morning. We want to take a look at Clawson and New Baltimore, but first we start in Taylor, and that is where a Burlington Code Factory store opening back up today after a deadly shooting. Uh, one employee actually was killed. Police say an argument between two female employees escalated until one woman pulled out a gun and shot her co-worker. The victim did later die at the hospital. The suspect turned herself in. You can imagine what charges she'll be facing. In Clawson, police are searching for the man caught on camera firing his gun during a road rage incident. Surveillance video shows the two drivers pull into a parking lot. One jumps out, the other tries to run him down, and then that driver gets out of his car and points a gun and fires a shot. Thankfully, no one was hurt. And in New Baltimore, outrage after a gas station owner admits to selling bad gas. It was contaminated with water. Multiple drivers took to social media on Monday to say their cars broke down after filling up their cars with the tainted gas at the Valero and 23 Mile and Jefferson. The gas station official told us that uh, there were cracks in the underground tanks and with all the recent rain, water managed to seep in. Well, my wife got gas in that truck yesterday. It was, it was had like an eighth of a tank and she put like 12 or 13 gallons in and they said probably one third of it with water. Unbelievable. The Valero station is working to make up for the incident. They say that their insurance company will cover repair costs for any drivers affected. I got to say, I deserve an Oscar for being able to save that gas and make it through that entire story. I'm very proud of you. I'm growing up. <laughs> I know. This is a breakthrough today. Well, it is Tasty Tuesday, and how about some comfort food from the South with some Caribbean inspiration? I love that. We're going to take you to a new Detroit dining spot, a Metro Detroit dining spot that is coming up for Tasty Tuesday. Plus, Jason is here in studio. Good morning. Good morning. A marathon a day for an entire month and his next 26 miles right here in Detroit. Up next, we'll talk to the United States Marine who's running to raise money for wounded veterans just like him. Skyforge. So as I was saying, the two W's. <laughs> yes. What was that for? Cubs play tonight. Is that what was it? Fly the W? Fly the W. I would say that more if uh, our boss wasn't watching. She's, oh. she's a big Cardinals fan. Oh, that's I true. I really have to she watch is. that one. Yeah. Is, it, is it for the Red Wings? But they picked up their first L last night. Oh. Maybe, so. maybe option number C, warming and windy? Windy today. That has to be it, that's right? That's it, yeah. All right. Well, well, tell us about that windy day today. Well, here we go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. It's going to be a good one. We have uh, a coolish start, another day in the 30s and 40s, but I don't think our numbers are really going to fall off any much more. We have another 
hour before the old sun comes up and warming winds out of the south are going to help to keep us from falling off too much here, but mainly in the 40s as you head out and about. You notice Washtenaw County reporting some 30s out there. It's really in the rural areas, not necessarily on campus or downtown, but still cool sweatshirts, jackets and shorts today for the kids. Sunrise time is 749 AM and 42 degrees then afternoon high temperature 67. Those winds are going to be whipping 10 to 20 miles an hour gusting to 25. A pretty simple setup for what we call a pressure gradient. Has anybody been paying attention this morning? It's two areas of pressure, low pressure north, high pressure south and the way that the air swivels and swirls around these two systems squeezes the air in between. We just happen to be located in the right spot at the right time for a breezy to gusty afternoon. Listen, if I'm selling breezy conditions as my forecast theme, uh, we've got some good stuff, you know, lined up in the forecast. Lots of sunshine, almost a waste of time to show you the model. I got nothing near 70 degrees tomorrow, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday evening, rain and thunder and a chillier week next week. I'm not saying snow, but I saw some models, Kim, that were hinting at what could be a little wintry mix. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know. We'll see. Okay. I don't even as know. As long as you keep the roads safe, then I'm okay with that. We do live in Michigan. All right. Well, good morning, everyone. We've got a few problems to warn you about before you head out the door. Like this problem over in Warren, the northbound lanes of Mound right here, just past I-696. That is where we have an accident blocking one lane, and you can see that uh, there actually is some delays over on I-696. Don't know if that has to do with that accident, but just be aware of that accident if you do travel through Warren. And we also want to take a look at our 1-800 call Sam Chopper shot. This is a look at westbound I-94 right near Metro Parkway. We've got another accident where the left lane is blocked, so you may see a little bit of a delay in this area as well. Be careful. Jason, over to you. Thank you, Kim. He's raising money for wounded veterans one marathon at a time. He's ran five so far. Today will be number six. Veteran Rob Jones, who did tours in Iraq and Afghanistan before being wounded in action, is in Detroit this morning, just moments away from starting his next 26-mile fundraiser. He joins us live from Belle Isle. Good morning to you, Rob. How are you? Good morning. I'm doing well. How are you guys? Uh, super. Uh, I can't even imagine training for one marathon, let alone doing one a day for 31 days. What are you thinking? Uh, you know, I'm just focusing on uh, one day at a time. So I'm just waking up in the morning and saying, all right, I just got to go for a long run today. And uh, after tonight, I'll just focus on tomorrow. Yeah, one day at a time indeed. Uh, tell us all about how this started with your fundraiser on a bike and what led to fundraising uh, running a, a marathon. Yeah, so, um, you know, back in 2013, I rode my bike uh, from Maine to uh, Camp Pendleton, California, and uh, I did it because I wanted to prove that uh, wounded veterans, just because they come back injured uh, psychologically or physically, doesn't mean that they can't still contribute to society and re reintegrate back into their families, into society. So I, uh, I set out to do something that could prove that it's possible, uh, not only for, vet for veterans, but uh, to show the civilian populace that as well. And my 31 Marathon Challenge is a continuation of that, just uh, in a different way. Uh, so far, I was looking at your page online. You've raised 125000 out of a $1 million goal. Uh, is that correct? Yeah, so my bike rider raised 125, and I think right now for this, we are somewhere around 60. So uh, keep going strong, and how can somebody donate? How can they support you? How can they follow you? Maybe you'd like to run with Rob. How can they do that? Yeah, yeah, the best way to do that would be to go to my website, robjonesjourney.com. Um, you can donate there. You can buy uh, my T-shirt there. And uh, you can RSVP to come down and run. And, you know, I'll be down here from uh, 7 to 1 o'clock probably running. So if anybody sees this and wants to come on down, then join me for a mile or something. Excellent. Rob, we love it. Good luck. Thank you very much. Thanks for the opportunity. Absolutely. If you'd like to run with Rob, we've posted everything you need to know on the homepage at clickondetroit.com. Let's go over here to the food table where we find Tasty Tuesday. And a guy who could use a run or two.
Maybe I'll go out for a lap. Sounds like a great idea. Detroit, it's time to donate. Go ahead and do that for Rob. All right, his grandmother cooked for some of Motown's greatest artists, and he has written a cookbook with Ziggy Marley. Now you can choose to taste his infused food rolling down the river, Bistro Detroit. Brand new on Grand River near the Southfield Freeway is a fusion joint here to stay called River Bistro. So you kind of get in a little Caribbean and a little soul mixed together. Take the ribs. River Bistro Detroit takes a classic Southern comfort food infusing Bahamian and Jamaican flavors. Jerk ribs with the nice little plantain chips and our house pickles seasoned in our marinade 24 hours, our jerk seasoning. Um, and then we smoke those for uh, four hours. River Bistro's MO, food is a lifestyle. For that, chef and owner Maxell Hardy grows his own Caribbean peppers and spices and locally sources everything on the menu from the rock shrimp fritters to the skin on Atlantic salmon. Then we have a maple glazed salmon uh, with a little curry spice to it. Uh, cilantro rice. This is the crispy skin we talked about. Sear that down hard. Kind of give you a little more crunch and a little more body to the to the fish. And and lots of flavors in it. You know, my mom's from Bahamas, so I want to infuse a little Caribbean in there as well. Um, and kind of pay homage to her and to the Bahamas. Chef Max learned from his mother and grandmother, whose loving recipes were served to Motown's favorite artists back in the day. Hardy has some of these recipes infused in his River Bistro best from pride in his heritage to the walk of shame for you and me in his dessert menu, like the vanilla bean cheesecake or cookie sandwich. The cookie sandwich um, is three layers of cookies. Um, the first layer is uh, cannoli cream, and then the second layer is uh, vanilla bean ice cream. And then we top that with a nice um, honey and caramel sauce. Oh my that, God, that looks wow. really good. Looked Delicious. I'll Go to all this. Give you a dollar to take a bite of that. Pepper. No, I will not. These are I love all the healthy food. Yes. Caribbean peppers. Yeah, he grows a lot of his own uh, vegetables, especially the ones that uh, add to his infused flavors that you can't get around here. But everything else mm. is uh, locally sourced. Delicious. And look at this beautiful salad we have out there. The bistro salad, sort of uh, Chef Max's take on a cob, but some some different elements and greens. Mixed and then in you there. said. Jerk chicken on it, right? Was that jerk chicken? Yep, jerk mm. chicken. Mm. Uh, right next to flavor. that, yeah. In front of Rhonda is that skin on Atlantic maple glazed salmon with that cilantro rice and oh, some of those. So good. Some of those. Peppers. I love cilantro. It's delicious. And this is all you can smell right now. Yes, that curry. That curry flavor. Right, curry and coconut mm -hmm. shrimp. Again, a beautiful blend of those. Uh, Southern and Caribbean flavors together. Right behind that, a pineapple salsa on top of the uh, chicken. Jerk that is chicken. Jerk chicken, mm -hmm. right there. Yep. Uh, and he's, you know, he smokes the the ribs and the chicken, everything there, the wings. We've got a couple of desserts. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, we mentioned a couple of them in the story, but we have the key lime cheesecake there. That looks amazing. With Kim and the rum cake right there. Also, they have a rum bread pudding, and either the rum cake or rum bread pudding included in their Tasty Tuesday special mm. two-day. Mm. Do you like it? <laughs> Does she like it? I don't know. I can't tell. <laughs> you know, that's the curry you, shrimp is unbelievable. When you get those flavors, that's Yum. the reaction mm. you get. That. Mm. Mm. So good. <laughs> So really good. Good. It is. Yeah, today's deal, you can uh, get the free rum cake or rum bread pudding when you mention Tasty Tuesday with your entree or 10% off of your meal when you mention Tasty Tuesday. The mm. restaurant, again, located on Grand River. Mm. River Bistro. Uh -huh. between, Got it. Between Outer Drive and Fankel, they open at 11 a.m. And we encourage everybody. They've only been open a couple of months. So oh, well, they have figured it all out. Well, they you know they'll be there at 11. <laughs> yeah. You can do the Delicious. walk of shame there yeah. as well. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, for this Tasty Tuesday segment, all others, head to the Scene on 4 page of Click on Detroit. Love it. Love it. I know. All right, we're going to enjoy this during the break. I know. You've got your story to watch for coming up. That's my play. Oh, good. CNL War.
Good morning. We're following breaking news on Detroit's west side. We have just learned that a woman was shot in the face and that police are out here on a barricaded gunman situation. I want to set the scene for you this morning. We are on Plymouth and Schaefer on Detroit's west side. We're being kept far away from the scene, but if you can take a close look, you can see police have set up police tape. There are also a number of officers out here. I'm also told that the special response team is out here. This all happened at around 515 this morning. We're told a 35 year old man barricaded himself inside of the Soul Devils Motorcycle Club on Plymouth Road. He is inside of that location right now. According to police, he is armed with several guns. That's what police believe at this time. They tell us that the man shot a woman in the face. It's a graze wound, so she is expected to be OK. However, when we were out here on scene, we did see her be transported into an ambulance, and we also heard her saying that she was shot in the face. She seemed very upset and frazzled at this time, obviously, given the circumstances. Now, police are staged here at Schaefer. Again, they have a police line set up this morning, so we're working to learn more details about what happened this morning, but right now, we do know that this is a barricaded gunman situation and that a woman was shot in the face. Back to you. Pretty scary stuff. We'll be checking in with Coco throughout the morning. And in storage to watch for, the wildfires in California have killed at least 41 people. That number, of course, increasing from yesterday. And it's also forced thousands of evacuations. A number of people still unaccounted for. And the National Guard has deployed troops to aid in search and rescue efforts. North Korea's deputy United Nations ambassador spoke to the General Assembly warning of possible nuclear war on the Korean Peninsula. He went on to say the North should be allowed to possess nuclear weapons in self-defense. The convicted rapist who is mistakenly given joint custody of a child is due back in court today. Christopher Marisalo was contacted by the state when the child's mother applied for state assistance, but this situation should have granted an exemption to his input. The criminal who challenged police on social media is appearing in court today. Michael Zaydell, a.k.a. Champagne Torino, told Redford Township Police that he would turn himself in if the Facebook posts they shared about him reached 1,000 shares. Well, it did, and he did turn himself in on Monday. He'll be arraigned later today. Thursday marks a very important day for the city of Detroit. It's the final deadline to make a pitch for Amazon's coveted new headquarters. We know Dan Gilbert has been been leading the charge in this, convincing the e-commerce giant, which could bring up to 50,000 new jobs right here to downtown Detroit. Jason. Today on ClickOnDetroit.com, an important warning for Wi-Fi users, why the network you're using could put you at risk and how you can protect yourself. We have that info on our consumer page. Plus, the 10 finalists have been announced for 2017's film Challenge Detroit. Tomorrow at 8 p.m., the deadline to vote for your favorite, you can find a link on the community page. Plus, Detroit Lion Don Curry, you just saw him live this morning on air, just released a book to inspire young adults. Check out my interview with him on our page and also he's going to be at the Roseville Walmart on Gratiot starting at 6 30 p.m. tonight signing copies of this book right here back to you guys and it's a good one if you need a little inspiration Don Carey's book is for you how about our uh, numbers today already starting to see those winds picking up southwest at 11 it's all right 43 degrees now without much in the way of cloud cover today tons of sun 67 it is going to be a little bit breezy today with 10 to 20 mile an hour winds out of the southwest maybe gusting a little stronger but if that's the worst problem we have Kim we're doing all right we are doing okay, that's for sure. Here's a look at a problem we have over on westbound I-94, right at Metro Parkway, left lane blocked, expect delays. And Finally, a happy birthday. Happy birthday, Mom, I love you. Happy Aww. to Julio. Happy, <laughs> happy birthday. And we do want to leave you with parting shots from Bell Isle, where Rob Jones' journey continues. He's the veteran that is running 31 marathons in different cities, and today he's running around Belle Isle and Detroit. You Good can luck. Join him.